Let us listen to one another with open hearts and open minds. I welcome you for a very well-deserved uh, Christmas break. Before you went on Christmas, I don't think there had ever been a Senate in Nigeria that showed so much zeal and patriotism. Even in uh, clearance of nominees for different appointments, including ministerial, you worked here sometimes up to 10 p.m. in the night, sometimes 11. And then, of course, what you did during the budget sessions, totally unprecedented. You have to collapse your rights and then team up with the House of Representatives to have joint sittings to be able to meet up the January to December period for Nigeria to move forward. And I want to say congratulations to all of you. Even if the, uh, the others do not see it, we know the stress on ourselves that we went through to achieve what we did. And I believe that with that commitment, Nigeria will definitely move forward. In all Almighty Allah. Thank you to all of you. To my heartfelt wishes for a happy new year to you and your families. The past year tested us in the crucible of elections, 2023, and our constituents found us worthy of their trust, and then they mandated us to be their voices in government. Our commendable performance, as stated last year, has raised the expectations of our people. When a task is executed with excellence, expectations naturally sour. Thus, the research provided us with an opportunity to reconnect with our loved ones, re reignite our commitment to the public good, and return to this esteemed chamber with renewed vigor and determination. Our concerns are based on us, the weighty responsibility to serve, to lead, and to make decisions that shape our nation's cause and the welfare of our people. We must never forget the gravity of this responsibility or the faith our constituents have placed in us. Allow me to recount a story from an American history captured in the publication called A Message to Garcia. This was written by Albert Hobart. During the Spanish-American War, the United States needed to contact the Cuban leader, the Cuban rebel leader, General Galicho Garcia, for a joint military strategy. U.S. wanted him badly in Cuba. However, General Garcia was a wanted man because of his activities, and his whereabouts were unknown. The then American president, William McKinley, entrusted a man named Andrew Rowan with a letter to deliver to Garcia without giving him any address and without giving him any direction. He just said, deliver this letter to Garcia. Rowan Garcia. Rowan, the letter carrier, did not ask any question. He did not say, where do I find him? He strapped the letter to his chest, as was the practice in those days, and joined it to Cuba. After using his initiative, he found General Garcia. He delivered the letter personally to him, and then he returned to America to his president with a very great reply. The president was excited. Just like the letter carrier, Rowan. Each senator here has been entrusted with a mandate from his senatorial district and his constituents, akin to Rowan's letter, which is strapped to his chest. Our constituents believe that we can navigate the corridors of power, do whatever is right, in order to make them proud and return with tangible results to our constituents. We must carry this mandate close to our hearts. We must act upon it, and we must make our constituents proud, as expected of us. Like Rowan, the building blocks 
needed to create a great and united country in Nigeria must be dealt with in this hollow chamber. These blocks will require courage, it will require unity, it will require integrity, and it will require strategy. As we are entrusted, like Rowan was, we must take the resource home. No matter what, we will never fail, and Almighty God will not allow us to fail. I thought somebody would shout Amen. Amen. So, distinguished colleagues, it is our duty to justify the trust vested in us by diligently addressing the challenges facing our nation and striving for the betterment of society. As distinguished senators, we have a unique platform to effect change and advocate for our constituents' interests. History and future generations will not forgive us if we squander this opportunity or fail to leave our mark on the annals of time. Let us use our time in this revered chamber to delve into pressing issues, engage in passionate and respectable and respectful debates, and craft legislations that reflect the needs and aspirations of the people of Nigeria in general. In the coming months, we will face a multitude of challenges from economic recovery to healthcare reforms to national security and even social justice. It is imperative that we approach these issues with a spirit of collaboration, brotherhood, love, and commitment to finding common ground in order for this country to move forward. Let us rise above partisan divides and work together transcending party lines for the greater good of our great nation. Our patriotism demands that we need no other call except Nigeria's call, the call echoed in our national anthem. Let us continue to work and collaborate with the executive arm of government under His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu without compromising our independence as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution. I urge every one of us to embrace the power of dialogue and the importance of compromise. Let us listen to one another with open hearts and open minds, guided by reason and evidence in our decision making. Let us be champions for the marginalized and the voiceless and advocates of justice and equality in our dear nation. Our purpose should be twofold to do as much good as we can to all the people we can, and to prevent an injustice from befalling anyone in our great nation. For injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. As we speak on this, as we embark on this legislative session, let us be inspired by the limitless potential of what we can achieve together. Let us remember that the work we do here has the power to transform lives of live communities and shape the destiny of our great nation and the fortunes of our continent. We must be bold in our vision, unwavering in our commitment, and steadfast in our dedication to the principles of democracy and good governance. Once again, I extend my warmest welcome to all of us I pray that we embark on this new chapter with a sense of purpose and determination to make a difference. Together, let us strive for excellence, serve with integrity, and leave a lasting legacy of progress for future generations. Let the 10th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria be a reference point in good legislation and a statement to our collective dedication to democracy and vision. Welcome and God be with all of us.